Jane Lowe and I'm at Black Hat Asia 2023 and with me today I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Yakia and Eli who are with Aqua yes. all the way from Israel yes. and to talk to us about uh, supply chain risk and uh, threat vulnerabilities in the cloud development area. So thank you so much for your time today guys. Thanks for reminding us. Yes. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, uh, supply chain risk obviously has been quite a big uh, news item over the last two years, especially with solar winds, right? Yes. yes. And so now uh, everyone is, you know, uh, really focusing on the third party risk relating to in this supply chain. And so your talk talks about uh, looking at the supply chain risk from a, in a software development cycle. Uh, from an attacker's perspective and how some of these uh, vulnerabilities uh, relating to third-party uh, code could uh, add to this uh, uh, threat. Is that right? Yes. yes. Yeah, can you please explain uh, yes. each of these yes. phases? Yes, so uh, we're breaking the, like, the chain of taking uh, not the code, not just code into an artifact that runs, but you try to break it down uh, to where are the phases that an attacker can uh, intrude to inside the organization and change the code. And uh, if you think about it, we read somewhere that uh, most of the organization uh, uh, only developed their uh, like 5% uh, their coding their own. Uh, I, I mean, most of the code in some organization are used from other platforms. Correct. So we are have a heavy dependency on other code. But how can we know that we can trust it? And in our research, we, we show how, really, how it's uh, really easy for attacker to upload uh, malicious code or... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, yeah, I'm just thinking back to my programming days, right? Um, and some, how, you know, I will rely on, say, calculators, libraries, you know. Um, yes, uh, exactly. So, yeah, and basically, I sort of just assume that they are safe without yes. really, you know, checking, uh, you know, calculators, how can they be yes. malicious, right? Yes. But so they, they could possibly be. If someone uploaded a, a, a patent package of a calculator, for example, and you use it, uh, you don't, it might do calculations for you, but it might as well do stuff for the attacker, which you don't know about. So in the, in the source code, one you want to answer? I, I have another example. Uh, many of us use uh, some browser extension, you know, uh, Chrome or uh, other... Oh, browser extension. Yes. Okay, yes, okay. Yeah, so uh, developers use uh, for their uh, own uh, development uh, environment some uh, uh, IDE extensions. And in our research, we found how those extensions could be sometimes malicious and how easy it is for mm -hmm. attacker to upload malicious spec to the marketplace of uh, VS Code, for example, and it's the, sa the same things could happen, for example, in a browser extension like Chrome, and you download the extension for your uh, uh, web browser, how do you know it's, uh, it, you can trust it and mm -hmm. uh, it's not contain some uh, malicious code? Right, so it's very similar to, say, for example, downloading an app into my mobile phone. How do I know that whether yes, the app exactly. is malicious or not, exactly. right? Exactly. Just, okay, we're, talking, exactly yes. Yes. Just yes. we're talking about apps that help you be, uh, build your code, write your code faster. Right, okay. Yes. So uh, in this IDE environment right now, and then now we move on to the source code manager. So yes. what happens there? Uh, when, you f when you finish writing your code, you're using Git uh, to upload it to GitHub, GitLab, uh, Bitbucket, which are a source code management to store your organization code and like manage it with it, pull requests, it's called like uh, to merge the code of if two developers work on the same project. Right. You need to merge uh, the code in, to be a unified code. So the source control management helps you do it easily and safely. Uh, so we're talking about attacks on these platforms like GitHub where you store all of your organization's right. code. Okay. So about attacks there that could infiltrate your uh, change your code of how it's stored in the SCM and stuff like that. Okay, right, okay. So, so we have talked about uh, uh, browser extensions and how they could be malicious, and we talk about GitHub, how, it, how there are some vulnerabilities that uh, software developers need to be aware of. And now we move on to uh, Package Manager. Yes. So yes. what happens there? Uh, in this phase, we show uh, uh, if Let's assume that you are trying to decide to install some packages, and then you try to uh, look who is the owner of this package. For example, uh, you know that uh, if uh, Microsoft uploaded the, the package, you can trust it because Microsoft is a big uh, right. co company. But we are able to fabricate it and, sh and attack you, uh, for example, upload malicious package, and then uh, change the owner uh, instead of him to Microsoft mm. in order to make the package look more innocent. Mm, mm, uh, so mm. even if you try to trust other uh, owners before you picking package, uh, 
the, some platform are vulnerable to some attacks vector that could allow attacker to uh, um, spoof this, uh, spoof the owner. Right, uh, so it's very similar to say some spoofing, uh, a spoofing exercise in a phishing email, for example. So, yes. so you, you think that it's coming from Microsoft the email, but it's actually not. Yes. I can tell you on top of that, that if you, if you write your code very safely in the ID phase and the SEM phase, everything is okay. And you use uh, legitimate packages, not, not malicious ones. Okay, like a very famous uh, calculator package, for example, uh, that is very common and it's not malicious. But you don't know who, who are the maintainers of this package. Mm. And maybe, uh, no, not that they are malicious, but maybe someone has a weak password, for example. And uh, an attacker can breach his account on the package manager and change the package to being malicious. Right. So now everyone okay. that uses this popular package that I has 10 of millions of downloads, mm -hmm. everyone will get infected. Mm -hmm. okay. So the package, had, everything is legitimate. But it's just that the inside is now corrupted. Yes, like uh, okay. you used it, it was very, it, it was okay. But then someone breached the account of the publisher of the package, the maintainer right. of the package, okay. and made it malicious. It was right. malicious, but then it was made malicious. Okay, so so we talk about package manager now. Um, now we move on to the CI/CD phase, yes. right? right? And so what happens here? Uh, wow, well, we have many examples in these phases. Yes. Uh, in our lecture, we, try, we will show uh, how we found that one of the popular uh, platforms is vulnerable to uh, vulnerability that called, uh, called IDOR. But uh, what's important here is that uh, we found a lot of token of many open source projects uh, because of uh, some vulnerability that exists in the, this platform. Mm. And this token exposed many organizations for supply chain attacks. Uh, actually, we found, I think, more than 73,000 73, different tokens, tokens yes. of different so. projects on GitHub uh, that sometimes contain tens of thousands of stars on GitHub. So imagine what could happen if attacker found those tokens and then inject code to, the, to, their, to this uh, uh, GitHub repos. So during this phase, uh, a lot of developers are working on a, on a project together. And so some of the tools that are used will yes. have to have uh, credentials from the different developers. And this is where some of the vulnerabilities of the tools may cause some of these credentials to be yes. leaked. Is I, that right? I can tell you like an example that in the CI-CD phase, you build uh, every, all of your code into an artifact, like an exe or anything, and then uh, you want it to run on uh, your uh, machine in AWS in the cloud. For that, the, the CI-CD provider, which is Jenkins, Zirkle CI, GitHub Actions, uh, need the token to your machine in the cloud in mm. order to upload, upload, the, up, to upload it. So it, they have to have the credentials, but sometimes maybe someone will, by mistake, uh, print uh, that token. That token is a password, uh, so it will print this token, and because of the, the logs were public for anyone, someone that is not even related uh, to that project, like an attacker, for example, he can see these logs, see the, someone printed the a password, and then take this password ah, for himself right, okay. and breach the cloud, for example. So, so we are talking about uh, the logs that capture the uploads uh, from the artifact onto the cloud for, for deployment example, yes. or testing. And that l log may accidentally contain some of yes. these uh, passwords. Now, now, by, by default, most of, the platform, most of the platform make them uh, public for all because uh, some, sometimes developers want to know what, uh, how the CI-CD process, uh, what is the status ah, right, and check okay. for uh, bugs or something like that. You shouldn't uh, print uh, secrets uh, to your logs. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's important to say that there are many logs, not, mm -hmm. not just logs to, uh, sorry, many passwords or tokens, not just to the machine in the cloud, but uh, even for uh, uh, private repositories in GitHub, for example, mm -hmm. and, and many other. We found a variety of tokens. Uh, yes, some mm -hmm. of the tokens yes. were related to cloud providers, Docker, uh, Docker Hub or uh, GitHub, for example. Okay, so um, we talked about um, Again, just to go back to the different phases of software development that we have talked about and some of the vulnerabilities and the risks. So we talk about um, the IDE environment, which is integrated development environment, where you write your code and yes. how yes. some of the extensions that you use or rely on could be malicious. Source code uh, manager, where uh, uh, to, uh, 
two, two, more than one developer yes, are working exactly. on a uh, project together and, some, and, and how we rely on GitHub as part of this working yes. collaboration and GitHub has some vulnerabilities that may cause some of these uh, import of some of this malicious code and then CICD which is uh, where we build our... Compile, uh, sorry, or deploy, deploy. Right, continuous yeah. integration. Oh, right, right. So, so this is where we talk about the logs and how some of them could contain secrets. Yes. And of course, our package manager, where some of the packages, um, some of the tools may have very weak uh, authentication method that allow yes, exactly. threat actors to yeah. change the contents of some of these packages. Yeah. It's important to say that in each one of these phases, we spoke here of one example of an attack, like mm -hmm. weak credentials, for example, but there are many other uh, attack vectors that could be exploited. In each one of these phases, uh, an attacker that exploits even just one of these phases could insert malicious code into your Right, artifact. of course, yeah, yes. and then if it's a big project, yeah, it, yeah exactly. If, if you're you know, completely safe in the IDE phase and the SEM phase and no one uh, touched your GitHub, for example, in the IDE or SEM, if someone touches a package that you use from the package manager, you... Attackers, right. yes. attackers need only one. Only one, one, yes. That, and okay. regarding these registries, uh, we only focus on some between one to two popular platforms, but there are more than, I don't, more than 100 different registries that sometimes organizations using their development process. And each one of them contain their own risk and, and their own vulnerabilities. So we're talking about like third-party risk and how much you can trust all these third-party yeah. tools or platforms. Yes, he's talking mainly about code. like uh, uh, many people use Python and, uh, and, and Go. And NPM and, and Go. Go. But there are many other languages like C Sharp uh, mm -hmm. uses uh, Nougat. Mm -hmm. and there's Ruby for Ruby Gems. Mm -hmm. And there are many others that are not so covered in the media. Mm -hmm. And they probably have uh, malicious activity as well. Okay, so the question comes back to, right, um, this is obviously of, of concern, right? Software yes. um, supply chain, right? It's something that I think the US uh, government has also recognized as a result of solar winds, and they have an executive order to say, you know, look, guys have a software bill of you know, uh, materials to really identify what are the, yes. uh, the party or the other dependencies that you have in your code. Okay, I think that um, SolarWinds and other incidents like uh, 3CX that uh, was in the, for, in the past uh, few weeks actually raised the awareness around uh, the supply chain. In big company, we have a lot of uh, EDR and other uh, complicated solutions. Yeah. But uh, what about your third party? Correct. Because yeah. attacker, it's really simple for attackers That's to right. inject code to your uh, development process. Yeah. That's right, yeah. I, I can tell you on top of that, like, uh, you put so much money into making a good firewall and, and uh, not having uh, stuff run that you don't want and phishing, which is good because phishing uh, is a, a main attack these days, but an attacker can so easily get into an artifact, the media, uh, mainly focus about malicious Python packages, malicious NPM packages, but they do not talk about the whole uh, process that we've talked here about Correct. the ID, SEM, and that's everything. Right, that's that right. An attacker needs to, uh, to include just one, one. Just, right. just one. It can be in the ID, it can be in this, but there are many other phases that we need to, be, we need to look out for malicious activity. And if you're thinking about this, the developers nowadays um, really start to stop writing their code. They uh, sometimes use answers from Stack Overflow and ChatGPT. And let's yeah. say that uh, ChatGPT suggests them to install some package or uh, an answer on Stack Overflow. So they're doing it blindly and they don't know wow. uh, uh, Yeah, ChatGPT is malicious too. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> everything is an amazing tool. But, uh, A lawsuit coming, yeah. I think we need to evaluate open source projects more carefully before picking them because sometimes uh, mm. they can contain risk or malicious code. Mm. Yeah, I think many people have been talking about the dangers of use, relying on open source code. Yes. Well, obviously there are advantages because you share your code Ma and there, you don't have there to... There are many advantages, we don't yeah. deny that. That's, that's yes. right, yeah, but obviously there's also many threats. So um, how much do you think software developers are aware of the risks and what, um, you know, what are some of the typical sort of protection measures that people are putting in? Um, it's a tough question. Uh, I think that uh, developers today have more awareness uh, than uh, a few years ago because it's it's more covered. Supply chain attacks are more covered in the yeah, media. Right. Yes, uh, so it's a good step. But there there need to be, of course, more awareness right. to attacks yeah, to right. to understanding uh, what you said about. Uh, is this package really really legitimate? Mm. Well, am I just doing a pip install, which mm. is installing a Python package? 
uh, blindly? Am I looking? Is it malicious? Is it good? Who are the maintainers? There are many, there are many questions that need mm. to be answered, and it's, it's hard. It's, mm. it's hard. It's not, it's not an easy task. Yeah. I think I think the pressure is that the, there's always a time pressure component to developing yes. software, isn't it? You need to push the code out, of you course. need to push the patches out, right? Yeah. Um, so there's always a pressure there. So I think security always had been taking a back seat, right? Yeah. Yes. So until another problem like the solar winds, uh, which has a big impact, until that incident happens again, I think you know, unfortunately, it just seems to me that uh, the time pressure component will take priority. <laughs> I, I, I can tell you like that uh, uh, many many times when you develop, uh, uh, if you don't develop it in a secure uh, mind, mm -hmm. afterwards coming to think about the uh, about how to protect it is very hard. Security takes time. Uh, there's no there's no denying it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah. Otherwise, it really could be uh, too late because attacker uh, can already backdoor some of your other. Uh, mm. And libraries and maybe mm -hmm. deliver codes to the mm -hmm. other customer that rely on mm -hmm. your uh, That's exactly yeah so if it's a, a piece of software that is uh, heavily reliant uh, heavily uh, uh, deployed across the world say for example Microsoft Word and just one compromise there yes. um, you, you'll be looking at impacts across many many organizations yes. yeah in, in, in so when you do a supply chain attack on, on an artifact like Microsoft Word each one that installs this legitimate uh, legit, legitimate app will actually get Absolutely, attacked. Absolutely, exactly. And it's going to be behind firewall and... Absolutely, yes, that's right, that's right, yeah. So it's a huge, uh, uh, I think it's an issue that uh, we need continuous uh, sort of yes. uh, uh, attention on. Thank you very thank much, you very Eli much for and, us. and uh, Yakir for your time today. Thank you. Sure, thank, thank you. you.